In summer 2016, I decided to join Yvonne in a trial triathlon. She's Yvonne, by the way, and she does triathlons. Emphasis on the word trial. My trial triathlon involved, involved swimming 200 meters in the open waters of the harbor of the Rhine, cycling 10 kilometers, and running 2.5 kilometers. Doable, right? Well, after 30 meters, I almost drowned and died. Okay, I'm being exaggerated, but I almost drowned and I needed to be rescued from the water. So I can swim. However, I had never practiced swimming in a competition and swimming for long periods of times without resting. So in that moment, I decided this was not gonna defeat me and next year I would sign up again and complete that freaking trial triathlon. So in order to do that, we needed to practice to swim. Ever since then, we went to a public swimming pool to practice my strokes and most importantly for me to be able to to swim for a longer distance without actually resting. In this video, we're gonna talk about the things you should know if you also wanna go to a public swimming pool in Germany to practice your strokes. So the first question is, how do you find a public swimming pool in Germany to go practice your strokes? So each city and town has public swimming pools and most of them are actually run by the city or by the municipality. Some are also run privately by individual um, clubs like Schwimmvereine. Um, and you can easily Google by looking for Schwimmbad plus your town or city. Schwimmbad is the name for a swimming pool. However, please be aware of certain um, varieties of the name that indicate different kinds of pools. Let's just go through them real quick. So a Schwimmbad could be defined as a Hallenbad and this is typically an indoor swimming pool. Typically also for doing strokes, so like a sports and athlete swimming pool. Then there is the Freibad, the complete opposite. It is an outdoor swimming pool, typically only open in Germany in the summer season, well, spring to late summer season. Then there is the Freizeitbad, which is more a fun and activity pool, typically with slides and more for kids. They sometimes also have a pool for strokes, but expect more noise and less focus on the athleticism of the sport. And then of course there's also the Therme, which is more for, let's say, recreational and health um, benefits. So usually there's at least one pool with like thermal water, mineral water. Um, there can also be a pool for practicing your strokes for athleticism, but also more for relaxation. So when we go swimming, we typically go to an indoor swimming pool, so a Hallenbad, and in some, sometimes to a Freibad for stroking, not for recreational. And if you're into swimming and the pool size matters, in Germany there's two pool sizes, either the Olympic size, 50 meters, or 25 meters. Um, when I was swimming in the US, I was super confused because it was 25 yards or something or 30 yards. <laughs> it was a different length. So just bear in mind, 25 meters and 50 meters is what you usually get. Of course, when we started practicing to swim, we went to a 25 meter pool because I think the 50 meter one would have been way too much all at the beginning. Now, next to the um, professional swimming pool sizes, usually there's also always at least one second pool, which is smaller in size and also um, less deep. So that an adult typically can stand there. And those are being used sometimes for um, courses for babies or kids, um, sometimes also for adults to look at technique or like aqua jogging or any other types of courses. So if you don't feel comfortable in deep pools, this is always a great way to start. We've used this uh, kid's pool also when it's been too full in the power lanes and everything on the big pool and it was totally fine also to swim there. Also the pools tend to be a lot smaller. Yeah, they're usually like only 12 and a half meters or something no. like that. Now to the question, how much does it cost? So typically you pay per entrance, which is valid for the entire day. And uh, the entrance varies a little bit depending on your town or city. But from my research, the average price is around five euro 50 per visit. Now there are possibilities to reduce this price. Usually cities have kind of like a membership card for the city. In this case, in Düsseldorf, there's a so-called Beda Karte. Which I have right here. Hold on. It looks like this. It actually actually says better Karte. <laughs> yeah. So this one, for example, um, gives us discounts for every single pool in Düsseldorf because in Düsseldorf there's like five or six or seven different kinds of pools. Mm -hmm. And with this, you always get a discount. Um, you can also get a reduced rate by, for example, getting a um, 10 time entrance, so a Zena Karte that usually reduces the price. And uh, kids are, of course, also reduced. And some cities also have a reduced fare for, let's say, early morning or late evening entrances. Um, early bird usually, uh, which we used to have in Düsseldorf, but they stopped it, unfortunately. Hmm. But this is a uh, ways to reduce the price. Now, I would say swimming is a lot more popular in Germany than I expected. When we first arrived to the swimming pool, I was like, whoa, there's a lot of people. So the next question is, how do I know what is the best time to visit? 
I mean, it depends a little bit on your schedule, but there is a very common uh, rule to follow if you would like the emptiest pool possible to actually swim like properly and not just dabble in the water. And that would be in the early mornings during the week. And when I say early mornings, that means before eight o'clock. Yeah. Um, and that has two reasons. One, because usually from eight o'clock onwards, there might be groups, for example, school groups that then block a few lanes. Hence, there's less lanes available for the rest of the swimmers. Two, it takes a dedication to get up that early to go swimming. <laughs> so really only those go at that time that really want to swim. And three, if there's an early bird tariff, it's a great combination to save entrance, have an empty pool, get the spot done before in the morning before you go to work. Yes, and also talking about groups, not only school groups, but we also saw a group of police officers as well practicing to swim, I think even firefighters. If you're curious when these groups are going to start swimming in the pool, usually the pool's website has a Belegungsplan, which you can check out, and there you see the time of when the groups arrive, so you can avoid that time, because usually what happens, they block one or two lanes, and everyone else gets squished to the rest of the lanes, and then it becomes really crowded if there's a lot of people. In the afternoons, usually also private swimming clubs, like I used to swim when I was a teenager, from like four till seven block the lanes so that's usually when it gets a bit more hectic now what should you pack if you want to go swimming definitely a swimsuit even though fkk which is the <laughs> freikörper kultur. kultur in germany is quite common meaning nudity you don't go swimming in the pool naked i have to emphasize no <laughs> not unless it's a sauna era which we have a whole different video about but yeah. not in a regular swimming pool <laughs> and i would also say a one-piece swimming suit for women um, is way more common to find in swimming pools to practice your strokes than a bikini. Um, and for guys, usually if you're into swimming, we see mainly guys in like, not Speedo. speedos, not speedos, but like tights, like actual swimming shorts. Ah, yeah. Boxers, like kind of like beach style might be okay, but they're typically not the thing you wear for swimming in that sense. Yes, also you should check the website of the pool you're interested in swimming in because some of them actually require you to wear a one-piece swimsuit for women and either tight shorts for men or a speedo-looking short, not short, speedo-looking mm. bathing suit for men. Definitely no boxes. It needs to be like a, um, a cloth that is made for swimming. You should also check before and or at least on your first visit, ask the receptionist whether this particular pool has the obligation to wear a swimming cap something like this, which some pools actually do. And that is mainly to prevent hair from falling and clogging the drainage system. <laughs> Not all of them do. We always use one just because with long hair, it's nicer to swim with a cap. Um, and if there is an obligation, most likely at the reception, they also sell you one for a little money if you don't have one. Or you can also buy them at Amazon or also in any sports uh, shop. For example, I'm pretty sure in Decathlon, it's a popular one for cheap things. You can also buy it. And I would say it costs very little money. We got this one for free from the triathlon. Yeah, see. just participate in one. You always get one. <laughs> just, <laughs> just don't drown. <laughs> Another thing you should consider packing, it's not mandatory, but it's a very nice to have, and that is flip-flops or some sort of like uh, swimming sandals. That is A, for hygienic reasons. You don't know whose feet have been on the floor. And uh, second of all is to not slip because usually in the pool, swimming pool area is quite wet. So this will allow you to kind of have a little bit more grip while you walk from the pool to the changing room and from the changing room to the pool. Because you are not allowed to wear your street shoes outside of the changing room, inside the pool. Yes, definitely. Another thing you should highly consider is to actually wear goggles. I mean, if you're practicing your strokes most likely you need them otherwise I would say your eyes get really hurt also with the chlorine um, inside the pool plus also here you can actually see a lot better where you're going before you crash into the wall <laughs> then we also always take water or like a little bit infused water just because you are swimming you don't sweat doesn't mean you don't need to drink water because you actually do sweat just in the water yeah. but that is of course up to you and of course then the typical things a towel shampoo and body wash if you like to shower afterwards but that's totally up to you now, if you have long hair, you can, of course, pack your hair dryer. However, the majority of swimming pools, public swimming pools, they have a hair dryer stand or station outside of the changing area, which you can use for free without paying extra for it. Yeah. Now, a lot of internationals are probably a little bit scared of the changing area in both swimming pools or gyms and stuff like that. So let's talk a little bit about the etiquette of the changing rooms in the swimming pools in Germany. So I know of two scenarios for swimming pools. Either you will find a mass changing room, so a Sammelumkleider, where you have the lockers inside and you literally just change in there in front of everyone else. It is completely normal in Germany to be nude. There is no weird looks. 
And it's also completely normal while you're naked, maybe in the process of changing and someone else enters to say good morning or bye. Um, so don't feel awkward about that. However, I must point out, these are generally gender separated, yes, right? So yes. these Samuel, uh, what did you call them? Samuel Umkleide? Yeah, they're usually women and men separated. Correct, yeah. And then there's the other option that you um, find these little um, changing, private changing sectors where you have one door on the on one side and the other door on the other side. You know, street access, by, by, um, swimming pool access. Uh, you can change in there and then walk to a separate locker area to lock your things inside. Now, when you usually buy the ticket at the entrance, nowadays you get something like this, which is a card or a plastic coin. And with this, you will be able to enter the pool area. There's usually like a little boom. I don't know how to call these. It's like, like boom, a swivel gate, like a swivel gate that you go through. But most importantly, this is what helps you lock your locker. So don't throw this away. With this, uh, there's the area where the coin goes or this, you just stick it in. And that will allow you to turn the key from the locker to be able to lock your stuff. And also important, definitely hang on to the paper or coin or whatever you get, because you also need this to exit the pool yes. because you again need to activate this swivel gate to exit. Yes. Now one more important thing in case you do buy a tenor card like this one it actually says here Zena Karte don't throw it after you're done swimming because this is the ticket for nine more times so just hang on to it the people at the entrance will be able to tell you how much is left or sometimes also the swivel machine will tell you. Once you lock your things, you obviously have a key and usually that key, you can wrap it around your wrist or your ankle. We take a water bottle and we wrap it around there. So that is totally fine when we're swimming, it's there. And so far nothing has happened. No, 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 that's fine. However, that's important to point out that a lot of also these swimming pool areas, they have a specific area to lock your valuables. So I don't understand. I think there is with the pin code. No, no. Typically the valuable lockers, the smaller ones are at the entrance and there's a camera on it. Ah, that's the Whereas difference. in the changing rooms, there's obviously no cameras. Yeah, <laughs> fair point. Another important thing to highlight is that you don't necessarily need to take a padlock with you, an extra one to lock your things. Because as we said, there is a mechanism already in these lockers that you just use the key and stuff that's there already. At least for indoor swimming pools. Mm. Now in some um, outdoor swimming pools, the Freibad, which is more like for the summer fun, um, you might need the padlock. Actually, I've used one once oh. outside the lake, but that is a different topic, which we might do another video when summer comes. So maybe if it's your first time, just pack one just in case. You can use also the ones if you move to Germany with big luggages, the ones that you use there, you can use that as well. And that, you know, and if you don't need it, then you know you don't need it anymore. And again, to emphasize, the change room is the last place where you can use your street shoes, meaning that once you exit the change rooms, you cannot use them anymore. Otherwise, very kind Germans will yell at you. <laughs> If you're liking this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, and this is the probably second or third time you've seen us, then consider subscribing. And if you'd like to go the extra mile supporting us in this channel, you can buy us a coffee in the virtual form at simplegermany.com slash coffee. Thank you for your support. Now let's get to the juicy stuff. So now once you're changed, you're ready to swim and you go to the public, like to the swimming pool, you realize, wow, it looks like chaos because everyone is swimming super like concentrated. How do I actually get into the pool? Well, first of all, before you get into the pool, please go back to the locker area because you need to take a shower. Ah, and this is very important. And yes, you will also get, not yelled at, but kindly asked to go shower before you get into the water, purely out of hygienic reasons. Fair point. So you have to be looking wet when you exit the changing room for you to be able to jump into the pool. Talking about jumping, you're not allowed to dive into the pool. That is like the worst thing you can do. Unless it's a designated area. Yes. So usually in the pools, you have one side with like the starting blocks, but usually unless it's professional, same professional, teams competing, there is a sign no diving allowed. And this is just out of respect for others. So you don't accidentally jump on them while they're swimming in the lane yeah. already. <laughs> So important thing to point out is that the pool is usually divided in two areas. There's the power lane area, which sounds super intimidating. And then there's the leisure relaxing area. So the leisure relaxing area usually is for people that maybe cannot swim so well, or they want to do some yoga or not yoga, but water sports. I say they can swim so well, but they just really prefer to relax a little bit and yeah. not swim the long distances. Okay, fair point. Other people do little workouts under the water or do they just want to walk back and forth to the pool. And usually this area doesn't have lanes, so it's like open and you can pretty much freestyle there. And then there's the power lane area. And this is where actually people are swimming back and forth nonstop, what seems for hours. <laughs> so how do you know which lane to pick? So it highly depends on what kind of swimmer you are. So when I first started practicing swimming, I would go into a power lane area. However, it was a power lane area where I saw people were quite slow swimming. And usually those are people that do breaststroke. So I went there and then I did 20, well, to be very honest, the first time I did 
30 meters, I took a break. Then another 30 meters, I took a break. Through time, you know, I was able to go back and forth. Um, however, there's usually, especially in the morning, I would say very athletic people like Yvonne, practicing for like a triathlon or a competition. And they are usually the freestyle swimmers and they swim quite fast. And they have like a whole training plan and they have equipment and stuff. So I would prevent going into those lanes if possible. That would be quite kind. Unless, of course, you join uh, the power swimming uh, freestyle stroke. Because the thing is that you will not be feeling comfortable if freestyle swimmers will continually take you over because you get all the waves and for us it's not the fun if we continually have to take over um, ideally you find a lane that kind of like matches your swimming style yes but also don't feel intimidated by not wanting to get into the water just do your thing yes exactly so you get into the water and it's okay if you get into the water and then take a little bit of time to prepare your goggles and stuff as long as you stay in one corner not like in the middle super relaxing and then most importantly is to point out that there's going to be more than one person in your lane so to keep things in order, you need to always write, how do you say it? You always, always swim, swim on the right. On you the always right. have the wave breaker on your right shoulder. Yes. So you're always swimming counterclockwise if you look at the lane as a, as a whole. That's super important. That is like the number one etiquette in a lane. And the same goes if you're overtaking someone, you're always overtaking from the left. Please don't squish them into the, into the wave breaker. Give them enough space yeah. um, and just respect everyone else. Another important thing, I mean, I'm sorry to say it so bluntly, but please do not pee in the water. That's If you need to use the bathroom, there's more than enough bathrooms in the public swimming pools. You just need to exit the swimming pool, go pee, and then come back. Why should you not pee in the bathroom? There's a video that I'm going to link in the description below, which actually talks about peeing in the water or peeing in swimming pools is like the worst thing you can do. And it actually harms the chemicals that keep the swimming water clean. Now, if you have any questions or need help, there's always lifeguards on duty in public swimming pools in Germany. They're either circling the pool or usually at the middle of the pool, there's like a little window where they have that little office so they can oversee the entire pool. Don't be afraid to approach them if you ever need to. Now, after you're done with your workout, aka swimming, then it's up to you if you want to shower afterwards or not. That is not mandatory. <laughs> However, if you do want to shower, there's important things for you to know. Number one is that the showers are all open, meaning you shower in a community, usually. Or how do you call this in German? Nusammeldusche. Also as Sammeldusche, and also it is separated by genders. Yes. So that means that usually when you're done swimming, you're still wearing your one-piece swimsuit, you go into the shower, you start showering, and then usually people start taking the one-piece off. Sometimes halfway, sometimes completely. So again, don't, be, don't feel awkward, don't be intimidated by suddenly people being naked in front of you. This is completely normal. You can choose to take yours off, you can choose to leave it on. No one cares what you do as long as you don't start shaving yourself. Yes, I was going to point out the one thing you shouldn't do in these public showers is take your shaving gear and start shaving there. If you do, then just please do it at home. For me to improve my swimming, I needed to be coached, of course. Luckily, I had Yvonne here, as you pointed out. She was a semi-professional swimmer. However, if you want to learn how to swim, there's more than enough courses also provided by the public swimming pool. So now let's talk about the courses. Right, so every pool usually has a course offer. They're not always done by the municipality, but sometimes by private clubs that just use that pool. You can find the course offer on the website or you can ask the receptionist and typically there is different types of courses some for adults some for kids of different levels and ages some for aqua gymnastics so there's really a big variety there's also baby swimming sometimes on offer so it really depends please feel encouraged to check them out if you're interested talk to the receptionist and find the one that suits you best. Now, if you're curious, uh, Jen, did you actually complete that trial triathlon? The answer is yes. The next year I signed up and I was able to swim the 200 meters, uh, cycle the 10 kilometers and run the 2.5 kilometers. I got a, a couple of, um, how do you call these? Cramps. Cramps turned away, but that's a different story. I finished it and I said, never again will I do a triathlon in my life. <laughs> Now, a lot of public swimming pools in Germany also have saunas available. And if you are interested in going to the sauna in Germany, then please be sure to watch our video here on the left beforehand to learn about the sauna etiquette in Germany as well. Until next time. Cheers! Cheers.